I'd like to demonstrate the process of compounding more often than once a year. In the problems we've done so far, I have assumed that interest is paid on an annual basis, but some accounts or um, investments pay interest on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis. Uh, when you make your house payment, for instance, you have to make payments on a monthly basis, so for the lender, interest is being compounded on a monthly basis. That changes things. For instance, if I had $100 today and I put it in an account for a single year and interest was paid annually at the rate of 4%, at the end of one year I'd have $100 times 1 plus the rate of 4% to the power of 1 year and that'd give me $104. But if I have $100 that I put into an account that pays 4% annually but it's compounded quarterly, they would they phrase it that way. So I will just abbreviate quarterly. Then instead of getting 4% a year, I receive 1% a quarter. So $100 would stay in the account for the first quarter and I'd earn 1%. So 100 times 1 plus 1% is $101. During the second quarter, I would receive 1% again, but it's not 1% of $100, it's 1% of $101. So I'd multiply 101 times 1 plus 1% to get $102 and a penny. So I've earned a little bit extra interest. I'm basically earning interest. I earned 1% on this extra $1 the second quarter. The third quarter, I'm going to earn 1% again, but on 102.01, .01. so multiply by 1 plus 1%, and I end up with 103.03 at the end of the third quarter, and then in the fourth quarter, I earn 1% again. That gives me 104.06. So compare this total with compounded uh, or in, uh, <laughs> quarterly compounding to this total with just this annual compounding, even though they both have the same rate, with the quarterly compounding I end up with six more pennies. Now that doesn't sound like a lot and it's, and it's not, but if you compound this more frequent compounding over a really long time period and with higher rates, it's really going to add up. Now to uh, well, what I'd like to show next is the effective rate. They, they actually call it the effective annual rate. So if I'm trying to compare several different investments, like one might pay 4% compounded quarterly, another might pay 3% compounded monthly, I can't just look at the 4% and 3% and automatically say 4% is better because the the monthly compounding, the extra compounding per year may lead to a higher effective rate. Now, I turned a $100 investment into $104.06 after a year. That calculates to be a 4.06 rate of return, 4.06% uh, rate of return. So taking the ending value minus the beginning value of 100 over the beginning value of 100 gives me 0 0.0406 or 4.06 percent. That is my effective rate, but to calculate this effective rate I had to figure out the ending dollar value. There's actually an easier way. I can calculate the effective annual rate using this equation. I take 1 plus the stated annual rate, in this case that's the 4 percent, but then I um, break down that rate into its periodic rate. So I divide by the number of compounding periods per year. Boy, I, I know that's spelled wrong. <laughs> so number of compounding periods per year, which would be four. And then I take that amount and I raise it by the number of compounding periods per year, which I'm not going to write out again. So this denominator, this numerate, uh, sorry, this exponent would be identical, and then subtract one. So let's just test it on our example and see if it works. 
So my stated rate was 4%. I want to divide it by the number of compounding periods per year, which is 4, and then add 1 to that, and then raise it to the power of 4, then subtract 1 from that answer, and that should give me 4.06%. Now, if I had kept my money in there for two years, so the same account, 4% compounded quarterly, but I left it in there for two years instead of one, this denominator would still be 4 and this exponent would still be 4 because it's the number or how often interest is paid per year. It's not including how many years you keep it in there because we're trying to solve for an effective annual rate. So all we need to do is divide by the number of compounding per periods per year and then also make that the exponent. Now you can do this in Excel as well. There is a function that will calculate it. It is the effect function. So you just enter your nominal rate of 4%, a comma, and then the number of compounding periods per year, which would be 4. So there's our effective annual rate. You can also do this on a financial calculator, and I'm going to demonstrate the uh, TI-84+. Plus. So you go to Apps, Finance, and scroll down until you see the EFF function. Enter, and then you enter your nominal rate, but uh, enter it as a percentage, not as a decimal. So the 4% would just be entered as 4 and then a comma, and then the frequency of compounding per year, which in this case is 4. Close your parentheses, press enter, and there's your effective annual rate.